Good evening, folks. Uh, the meeting can begin whenever the chairman is ready. Chairman, chairman's ready, uh, but I'm not allowed to get, it won't allow me to go on video. Uh, the video, the video for this meeting uh, is, is not, is, is disabled. Okay, so there's not gonna be any video? That's correct. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have changed that on my pajamas if I had known that. <laughs> All right, uh, okay, so uh, is, is everybody here? Hi, sorry. Um, before we get started, can you just confirm the public number that's operable? Is it 929-436-2866? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, we're getting some inquiries via email. I know the, the Zoom service is slightly hectic today. Yes, we had uh, some technical difficulties uh, that Zoom presented to us, yes. Right. So just um, let's hold on for about two more minutes. And do we have Commissioner Delgado on? I thought I saw him in the, the list, but now I don't. Uh, he was on for a minute and then I believe dropped off. Yeah. So Chairman, I believe we have quorum, so we are ready to call this meeting to order. Very good, let's go. All right, so this uh, meeting is called to order. So everybody please stand up and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation. God, Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call of officers. Chairman Nolan? Here. Commissioner Rosinski? Here. Commissioner Abbey? Commissioner Abbey? I believe you are on. Maybe you're still muted. Yeah, you're muted. Hold on for. 
Okay, here. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Delgado? Present. Oh, perfect, thank you. So we have quorum. This meeting today conforms with chapter Wait, 231. I'm, I'm, I'm also here. Oh, is that Commissioner D'Agostino? Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to skip over you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Sorry about that. I, okay. I read your name in my head, but not out loud. Okay. <laughs> all, all members of the authority are present. So this meeting today conformed with Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, called the Open Public Meetings Act. And as per the requirements of the statute, notification of the meeting was published in the Star Ledger and Home News Tri Tribune, filed with the clerk of Middlesex County. Um, just to be clear, we received a service notification from Zoom, and our public notice included six different avenues of communication, but we were just put on notice that only two are operable. So um, the local number of 1929-436-2866 is our operable public landline, which has been published correctly. So moving on to our committee reports, we have the first report being the McFoods report. Do we have any highlights that are that would like to be presented at this time or are we relying on the information that was distributed in the packet? I think we could rely on the, the uh, information in the packet and other than to say that we're continuing to do our remote exterior operations for the program and continuing to purchase food, the uh, number of participants and the volume has not uh, decreased. So the need is still out there. Great. Moving on to our recycling report, which was distributed. Are there any other highlights that you'd like to incorporate into our meeting today? Yeah, I would just like to mention that um, we did begin a service in North Brunswick uh, two weeks ago. This is a, a new municipality being added to our curbside collection program. It's a significantly large community. And I will say that the contractor, North Brunswick, and our recycling team have done a wonderful job of coordination in order to make uh, a real seamless transition from their service before. Cans were distributed to all the residents. and. Uh, in the first couple of weeks of pickup, we've had just a sparse number of misses or concerns um, and really nothing of significance. So great job on the part of everyone. Okay. Moving on to the financial report, I believe we're relying on the information that was distributed to our board members over the weekend. Um, moving on to correspondence, Executive Director James Polis, would you like to give us an overall um, narrative about the operations involving the authority? Sure, I'll add to a couple of items that I've already highlighted. Um, the authority, as you know, is involved with working with the county for the distribution of the CARES dollars, the funds that came from the federal government to the state to the county. We've been working uh, very closely with our municipalities to ensure that they are able to obtain every dollar that is uh, owed to them through the program. These are reimbursements for COVID-related expenses, operational as well as salaries and wages. There is an enormous amount of detail that needs to be put together in order to support the uh, requests from the municipalities as per the federal regulations. Uh, and we're continuing to work closely with them. In fact, we'll be offering them even physical assistance if they need through a talent bank that we're putting together to help them with uh, putting together the financial details to make sure that the towns receive every dollar that they're eligible for. So we're continuing to work on that each and every day. We're entering, uh, believe it or not, leave season. Um, so we are moving ahead with our organization and plans to be able to uh, retrieve and uh, accept leave and, and brush and so forth from all of our municipalities. That's always a major initiative uh, for us. It is a large amount of volume. We work closely with the utilities authority management team over there where the property is located that we house the uh, materials and we're pushing that along. Last item is, is that we're in the middle of still working to work through the audit process. Uh, that's been complicated by, again, all the COVID care dollars and funding that's been coming into the county and into the IA. Uh, but the team has been doing a great job and we're making good progress. That's all. Okay. May I please have a motion to approve the committee reports? I'll make a motion. I'll I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, moving on to items of old business. Do we have any items of old business? 
Hearing none, seeing none, moving on to new business. Do we have any items up for new business? Hearing none, seeing none, we're going to move on to discussion of resolutions. Item 8A is authorizing the payment of annual assessment to the Middlesex County Insurance Commission. Item 8B is authorizing account temps as a temporary staff member to assist with COVID-19 related processing. Item 8C is approving a midterm decrease of the Roosevelt Care Center liability insurance deductible from $250,000 to $100,000 per incident. Through you, Chairman, I'd like uh, to put forth a, or present an opportunity to make a motion to move these through a consent agenda. I'm okay with that. Can you hear me? Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of the minutes of the agenda session and regular meeting of August 12th, 2020. May I have a motion to accept the minutes? Motion. Second. Second. Are all members in favor? Aye. 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 At this point in time, we open the floor to public, public comments on resolution items only. Uh, through you, moderator, are there any members of the public wishing to speak on the resolution items A through 8, 8A through 8C? Um, chairman and members of the board, I do not see any individuals with their hands raised at this time. Oh, there is a hand that just went up. I will unmute that individual now. Hello, board. Can you hear me? Yes, please state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, Charles Craddeville, New Brunswick, New Jersey. I am concerned about the board's compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act for these resolutions you're, ho you're holding hearings on because Mr. the Craddeville, numbers that you, you Mr. advertised so, are... Mr. Yep. Craddeville, respectively, these are just in reference to the resolutions. Oh. I would ask that you leave your comment regarding the procedure during the public session, which is number 13 on the, on the agenda. So these are simply to address items A, B, and C specifically. I understand. I have, the, I have the agenda here and I see five phone numbers on it and I tried to call the first four and they all didn't work for me. So as, I'm as, uh, concerned about, about others who may be trying to get on and comment on these very resolutions and maybe being shut out if they're looking at the same agenda I am. I understand you may have changed the website at some point today, but the, the agenda I'm looking at, the document itself, has five numbers on it, and, and respectfully, uh, the Mr. majority of them don't I, work. I, re I received your correspondence during the meeting and actually was able to provide you with a correspondence that we received a service notification from Zoom indicating that there were technological difficulties. Therefore, the one avenue of communication that was still proper was properly advertised and yes, phone number 1929-436-2866 is operable and does not limit any access to any members of the public. So if you have any comments relating to items 8A through 8C, now is your time to discuss them. Well, thank you. And I, I did respond to your email and I just want to, for the record, state that the, this was another reason why you shouldn't be blocking access to your meetings using the Zoom app. Because basically, if someone goes to use the Zoom app because they hear that it's Zoom, they're, they're frustrated, Mr. they can't Cradle, get on the number. They, 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 go, they go there and it, okay. it doesn't Special even Mr. tell Cradle. them that they're blocked. Let's, what it tells them is that their password is incorrect. And I'm okay. suggesting this is an invasive thing where you're trying not to appear on camera. So you're, you're blocking access to your meeting. And I don't think that that's appropriate. And I think now it's on this particular day when Zoom's having a okay, problem, it's catching up with you. And now you're violating the Open yeah. Meeting yeah. Act again. Can we stop this? Thanks. That's, that's uh, talking has been uh, disabled for that individual. Okay. Well, he okay. can come back. He can come back later. But, okay. Let's move forward. Anybody, is there anybody else that wants to comment on agenda items? Uh, there are no other hands raised, Chairman. Okay. And let's move forward. Moving on to number 11, which is the approval of resolutions. 
Uh, may I have a motion to approve the resolutions presented to the board through the consent agenda? Approved. Uh, motion. Motion. Second. Mm. All, all in all favor? Members of the board in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to item 12, which is payment of the vouchers. May I have a motion to accept the payment of the expenses? Motions. Second. Are all members of the board in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Okay. Moving on to the public session. Are there any members of the public um, interested in speaking to any items? I do see a hand raised, uh, Chairman. I will allow that individual to speak. Yes, hello again, Board, Charlie Craddeville. Okay, Mr. Craddeville, your mm -hmm. comments? Yes, sir. Uh, first question, very important one. I know the redevelopment agreement's been executed for the uh, replacement Lincoln Annex School. When can the authority promise the school will be will be open? We can't promise that. So the reason I ask is because there's a construction timeline in the redevelopment agreement, um, but it has a lot of uh, exceptions. And for instance, the force majeure clause includes pandemics as a force majeure. Um, do, do you think that that was wise to allow a pandemic to uh, extend the construction timeline uh, indefinitely considering we're in a pandemic? Well, my, my response would be that yes. I mean, we don't know. It's, it's a contingency. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen or that would be a delay. But if, for instance, uh, the contractors can't come or the governor orders that uh, construction can't go on because of a pandemic, whether it's this one or some future issue, then you have to have that contingency in there. Yeah, many well, the contract, contingency many, many contracts are going to have clauses like that now going forward. Yeah, well, the contingency means more time where the kids don't have a school to go to. So that's why I think you should take this more seriously and you should be familiarize yourself with the redevelopment agreement because it actually has conflicting dates in it. The construction timeline can be extended indefinitely, but the very next section, which is unaffected by the potential delays, says no later than August 1st, 2023. So does that mean, sir, that the MCIA is going to insist that the new school be ready by August 1st, 2023? Or will you uh, allow for a twisted reading of the, the document to, to extend the timeline beyond that? We'll, we'll take each uh, issue as it arises. You're, you're asking me to look at a crystal ball and like, we can't do that. Well, you authorized the agreement to be signed. You and many people spoke up against it and asked you not to um, because we're concerned about the, the hard deadline on when the school is gonna, gonna open. And I think that, you know, uh, what's likely gonna happen is we won't meet this August 1st, 2023 deadline and the, and the, the kids will continue to be in a warehouse. And I don't find that acceptable. Uh, do, you, do you think, uh, you know, asking the kids to go without a, a real school for uh, three years is reasonable? If it becomes four years, does it? When does it become unreasonable? I think you should talk to the board of ed about that. You're, no, you, you sir, are the one who's responsible for the timeline. Read the agreement. This is between you and Devco, and you'd made it. You made a bad deal. I got to be honest with you. Uh, speaking of that bad deal, um, the parking authority are they? Uh, uh, they're not committed to putting any money into this. Uh, who's going to? Who's going to uh, build this if the parking authority doesn't step up? And who's going to build the uh, power plant? And how much pollution is it going to produce? How much pollution? I have no idea how much pollution. I'm not, I don't know what kind of pollution it would produce, if any. And you're not sure if it produces pollution. It's going to pass whatever DEP or EPA regulations are required. How do you know it's going to pass if you don't even know if it creates pollution? Because it has to by law. It can't open without those. It has to be. It has to be approved by them. Well, what if they deny it? Then it won't open. 
then you won't do it, right? Okay, so uh, I, I think that you need to rethink this plan. Think about it in terms of how much pollution you would want in your neighborhood. I'm sure you live in a nice neighborhood. I'm sure you live in a nice house, and you, and you probably would not want a power plant in your neighborhood polluting uh, uh, 24-7. So I would suggest that you rethink this Chairman, whole scheme this member has, back uh, out of these. Fired their time. Okay. And I'll just caution you, you by Mr. doing Bell. this, you're, you're asking for, for this every month until the school is built. I'm going to keep coming back every month. Uh, you, you've asked for it. You've signed up for it now by put, putting yourself on the hook for this. So thank you for the time. But uh, this, is, this is down the wrong path. You're beginning a bad, bad thing. And I implore you to bail. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can we... Uh, uh, Chairman, there are uh, there is another individual with their uh, hand raised. Okay, one second. Um, all right, is somebody? No, I'll, uh, okay. Um, yeah, let the person in. Hello, can you hear? Your name and where, where your your name and where you're from, please. Hi, I'm Molly Pop Quintando. Um, I'm from Virginia, but I go to school at Rutgers. Is the sound coming through okay? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Um, sorry, I was just curious. I don't think I understand. Um, so with COVID, there are going to be delays to having the replacement No, not at all. No, no, not at all. There is a clause. Are there in going the to be? There's a clause sorry, in the contract. Continue. There is a clause in the contract that allows for certain contingencies for delays, like any contract. The, Mr. Cradiva was pointing out was one of the one of the potential um, issues would be pandemic, or what many contracts have what's called force majeure, which is something that's out of everybody's control that that's can't be predicted. So there is a clause that uh, you know has a contingency if there is a pandemic and somehow that pandemic um, delays the project, then there could be delays. It's just a it's just a clause for a, a potential issue. So the delay will apply not only to the school being built for the children, but also to uh, the construction of the cancer research facility and the sale of the school. Is that correct? Well, any any construction project could have delays. So I don't I don't know specifically what you're asking, but if any contract would have contingencies for delays and exceptions for delays if certain things happen beyond people's control. So and, I'm sure and all, will you all be vocal the about, Sorry, and will you be vocal about knowing if there will be delays and-, and Who's speaking? People yeah, who's this? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, yeah, there's two no, people there's, on the we, Yeah, oh. you can't have two people online. Yeah, for record keeping oh, purposes, okay. when, you, when you speak, you need to state your name and address for the record. But there's okay. a time if limit he, for each person, yeah. so. Oh, so one, gotcha. one at a time, and then you can move on to the second party on your phone. OK, Thanks. can I like cede my time then? Yes. OK, great. Hi, this is uh, Nolan Fahan. I also go to Rutgers, and I live in New Jersey. And I just wanted to know how, uh, you know, how soon you'd know if there were going to be some slowdowns of construction or if those would be vocalized. Uh, as I said, there, there's no crystal ball. These are things that could happen. We don't know what's going to happen. And we don't know whether there's going to be delays based on, you know, construction. The, often construction is delayed due to weather if there's a, a lot of rain, things of that nature. So we don't know whether there's delays until the project is ongoing. Okay, so there's no ongoing progress yet. So there's no, you don't know if there's any delays currently. It hasn't even started. It, it's not, there's no permits there's no nothing nothing's started yet okay all right that's all we have thank you okay thank you do we have anybody else there are no other individuals uh chairman with their hands raised all right Ann. okay moving on to the executive session we have no item today to present to the board to the executive session and number 15 on the agenda is um, the adjournment so may i have a motion to adjourn I'll make so, a motion for you. Second. All right. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Bye.